Section 11.5 is or and and problems with probability. In this section, we're going to learn how to start to solve compound probability problems. They'll contain the words and and or, and we're going to do this without constructing a sample space. Um, the reason why is sometimes creating the sample space can get really tedious and lengthy, and there are faster ways to do it if you have the proper formulas. So first, we're going to start with OR problems. Uh, the OR probability problem requires obtaining a, succe a successful outcome for at least one of the given events. So for example, um, let's say I want the probability of flipping a coin with a heads up or rolling a one on a die. And let's say I am doing that simultaneously. Anytime I get a heads up, that's a successful event. Anytime I get a one on the die, that's a successful event. And anytime I get a heads up and a one on the die simultaneously, that is also a successful event. To determine the probability of A or B, you first determine the probability of event A and determine the probability of event B, add those together, and then you need to subtract the probability of event A and B away. That's because that is going to be counted twice. So if you remember when we were dealing with Venn diagrams, um, if I asked you about the probability of event A or B, you found the probability that event A happened, and you found the probability that event B happened, but notice that the middle region got counted two times. That's why we're having to do the subtraction at the very end so that we don't have too large of a number. Okay, so let's look at an example. Each of the numbers one through 10 is written on a separate piece of paper. The 10 pieces of paper are then placed in a hat and one piece is randomly selected. Determine the probability that the piece of paper selected contains an even number or a number that is greater than six. Okay, so let's, um, let's do this problem two ways. The first way we can do it is with the formula. So keep in mind, we're looking for the probability of an even number or a number bigger than six. Okay, so to do that, we first have to find the probability of an even plus the probability that something is bigger than six minus the probability of both. Okay, well, if you look at your numbers one through 10, your even numbers are two, four, six, eight, and 10. So there's five out of 10 numbers that are even. Your numbers larger than six are seven, eight, nine, and 10. So there's four out of 10 numbers that are larger than six. Then you need to find the probability of both. So you want the probability that it is even and larger than six. So that would be the number eight and 10. So two out of 10 are both. So if we add five plus four, we get nine. Nine minus two, we get seven out of 10. So that is the probability of getting an even number or a number that's bigger than six. Now, there's nothing wrong with using the formula, but I think you could do this problem easier by just visually doing it. Okay, so I'm gonna scoot this up a little bit. We have the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So we are looking for numbers that are even or larger than six. Notice how I circled seven out of 10, done. You just don't count the items that are both twice. You just count them once. Um, it's up to you how you wanna do it. Um, I don't care as long as it makes sense to you. Mutual, mutually exclusive is a term that you need to know. Two events, A and B, are mutually exclusive if it is impossible for both events to happen simultaneously. So for example, it would be impossible to have an even and an odd number simultaneously. That would be um, mutually exclusive. So if two events are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A and B happening is zero. So when you go to do your probability of A or B, you can chop off the end part for the probability of A and B, 
um, because it's zero, so you can leave it off. If you don't want to and you want to just go ahead and subtract zero, fine. So let's look at an example. One card is selected from a standard deck of playing cards. Determine whether the following pairs of events are mutually exclusive and determine the probability of A or B. So event A is that you get an ace and event B is that you get a nine. So is it possible that when you pull one card from the deck, it is both an ace and a nine? No, that's not possible. So these are mutually exclusive. So in this problem, the probability of A or B is the probability that you get an ace plus the probability that you get a nine minus the probability of both. Well, since you cannot simultaneously have an ace and a nine on the same card, you get to leave that part off. It's mutually exclusive. Now, the probability of getting an ace, there are four aces out of 52 cards in the deck. The probability of getting a nine, there are four nines out of 52 cards in the deck. So if you add those together, that would be eight out of 52, and of course, reduce your fraction. Your probability is two out of 13. How about the probability of drawing an ace and a heart? Okay, those are not mutually exclusive because you do have um, an, uh, an ace of hearts in the deck. So in this problem, if you want the probability of an ace or a heart, you first have to find the probability of an ace plus the probability of a heart minus the probability of both. So in this problem, our deck has four aces out of 52 cards. Our deck has 13 hearts out of 52 cards. And in our deck, we have one ace of hearts. So we have to subtract that out because it will be counted twice. So if you take 4 plus 13, that gives you 17. 17 minus 1 gives you 16 out of 52. And then you should reduce your fraction. If you reduce, you'll get 4 out of 13. How about the probability that our card is red or our card is black? So we want the probability of a red or a black. So you need the probability of a red minus the, or sorry, plus the probability of a black minus the probability of both. Now, there is no card in the deck that is simultaneously a red card and a black card, so that means this is a mutually exclusive event, and the probability of both is zero. Now, the probability of red cards in the deck, there are 26 out of 52. The probability of black cards in the deck, there are 26 out of 52. So when you add those together, that gives you 52 out of 52 which means when you go to draw a card from the deck, you are 100% guaranteed you're gonna draw a red card or a black card. How about the probability that you draw a picture card and a red card? Is that mutually exclusive? No, it's not, because remember you have the jack of hearts, the queen of hearts, the king of hearts, the jack of diamonds, the queen of diamonds, the king of diamonds, not mutually exclusive. So the probability that we get a face card or a red card is going to be found by the probability of a face card plus the probability of a red card minus the probability of both face and red cards. So how many face cards do we have in the deck? Well we have three from the spades, three from the clubs, three from the diamonds, and three from the hearts. So that's 12 face cards out of 52 cards in the deck. How many of our cards are red? Well, half of our deck's red. So 26 out of 52 cards are red. And how many are both a face card and red cards? Well, we have the three face cards from the diamonds and the three face cards from the hearts. So that's six out of 52 that are both. So if you take 12 plus 26 minus six, that's gonna give you 32 out of 52 cards and then reduce your fraction and you'll get eight out of 13. 
Okay, the next type of probability that you'll work with is the and probability. The and probability re problem requires a favorable outcome in both of the given events. To determine the probability of event A and event B, you have to take the probability of event A times the probability of event B. Since we multiply to find the probability of A and B, sometimes they will call this the multiplication formula. When using the multiplication formula, always assume that event A has occurred when calculating event B, because we're determining the probability of attaining a fa favorable outcome in both. So, for example, two cards are be to be selected without replacement from a deck of cards. Determine the probability that two spades will be selected. Okay, so we know in a deck of cards that there are 13 spades total. So event A is we want a spade. So the probability of doing that is 13 out of 52. Event B is that we want another spade. But keep in mind, we took the first spade out and we did not put it back in. So that means there's only 12 spades left and there's only 51 cards to draw from. If you don't pay attention to that wording without replacement, you will get this problem wrong. Now when we do this, we'll just multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. I personally would just let my calculator reduce it for me by using the math frac option. And the probability is 1 out of 17. Independent events. Events A and B are independent events if the occurrence of either event in no way affects the probability of the other event. So for example, rolling a dice and tossing a coin are independent events. Whatever you roll on the dice has no impact of what you're going to toss on the coin. The previous example of drawing cards from a deck and not putting them back is a dependent event because what I draw in the first draw does affect what I can draw in the second draw. For example, 100 people attend a charity benefit to raise money for cancer research. Three people in attendance will be selected at random without replacement. Each will be awarded one door prize. Are the events of selecting the three people who will be awarded the door prize independent or dependent? This is an example of a dependent event. Each time one person is selected, it changes the probability of the next person being selected. So in the first selection, the probability of getting selected is 1 out of 100. But in the second selection, it's 1 out of 99. And in the third, it's 1 out of 98. So this is a dependent event. So in general, in any experiment in which two or more events are selected without replacement, the events will be dependent.